Hello, and welcome to Messiah Lutheran Church as we celebrate Thanksgiving. We begin with the proclamation of the day. In the first year of the presidency of George Washington in 1789, a day of national thanksgiving was set aside for the last Thursday of November. Since that time, Americans have celebrated this day in remembrance of all the blessings which God has poured down upon this nation and her citizens. In the Presidential Proclamation for Thanksgiving Day in 1863, President Abraham Lincoln had this to say, It is the duty of nations as well as citizens to owe their dependence upon the overruling power of God, to confess their sins and transgressions in humble sorrow, yet with assured hope that genuine repentance will lead to mercy and pardon, and to recognize the sublime truth announced in the Holy Scriptures and proven by all history that those nations are blessed whose God is the Lord. We have been recipients of the choicest bounties of heaven. We have been preserved these many years in peace and prosperity. We have grown in numbers, wealth, and power as no other nation has ever grown. But we have forgotten God. We have forgotten the gracious hand which preserved us in peace and multiplied and enriched our strength and strengthened us. And we have vainly imagined in the deceitfulness of our hearts that all these blessings were produced by some superior wisdom and virtue of our own. Intoxicated with unbroken success, we have become too self-sufficient to feel the necessity of redeeming and preserving grace, too proud to pray to the God that made us. It has seemed to me fit and proper that God should be solemnly, reverently, and gratefully acknowledged as with one heart and one voice by the whole American people. I do therefore invite my fellow citizens in every part of the United States and also those who are at sea and those who are sojourning in foreign lands to set apart and observe the last Thursday of November as a day of thanksgiving, and praise to our beneficent Father who dwelleth in the heavens.
Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known God's deeds among the peoples. God blesses us with gifts of love, with food and clothing, home and family. God blesses us with daily work and all we need from day to day. God protects us in time of danger all and guards us from every evil. God calls us into relationship with him and forms us into one holy people, the church of Jesus Christ in this place. Therefore shall we offer thanks and praise to the Lord our God. O Lord our God, we will give thanks to you forever. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Father, your generous goodness comes to us new every day. By the work of your Spirit, lead us to acknowledge your goodness, give thanks for your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A reading from the Mayflower Compact written in 1620. In the name of God, Amen. We whose names are underwritten, the loyal subjects of our dread sovereign Lord, King James, by the grace of God, of Great Britain, France, and Ireland, King, Defender of the Faith, etc. Having undertaken for the glory of God and advancement of the Christian faith and honor of our king and country, a voyage to plant the first colony in the northern parts of Virginia. Do by these presents solemnly and mutually in the presence of God and of one another covenant and combine ourselves together into a civil body politic for our better ordering and preservation and furtherance of the ends aforesaid. And by virtue hereof do enact, constitute, and frame such just and equal laws, ordinances, acts, constitutions, and offices from time to time as shall be thought meet, most meet convenient for the general good of the colony unto which we promise all due submission and obedience, in witness whereof we have hereunder subscribed our names at Cape Cod, the 11th of November, in the year of the reign of our sovereign Lord, King James of England, France, and Ireland, the 18th, and of Scotland, the 24th, and Anno Domini, 1620. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. A reading from history. The letter to Sir Irwin Sandys, a founder of the Virginia colony, from the pilgrims planning their trip to Plymouth, the 15th of December, 1617. As for the present, you rightly behold God in our endeavors. So shall we not be wanting in our parts, the same God assisting us to return all answerable fruit and respect unto the labor of your love bestowed upon us. We verily believe and trust the Lord is with us, unto whom and whose service we have given ourselves in many trials, and that he will graciously prosper our endeavors according to the simplicity of our hearts therein. 
we are well weaned from the delicate milk of our mother country and inured to the difficulties of a strange and hard land, which yet in a great part we have by patience overcome. Three, the people are for the body of them industrious and frugal. We may safe we think we may safely say as any company of people in the world. Four, we are knit together as a body in a most strict and sacred bond and covenant of the Lord of the violation whereof we make great conscience and by virtue whereof we do hold ourselves straightly tied to all care of each other's goods and of the whole by every one and so mutually five lastly it is not with us with other men whom small things can discourage or small discontentments cause to wish themselves at home again these motives which we which have been bold to tender unto you which you in your wisdom may also impart to any others we take our leaves committing you persons and counsels to the guidance and direction of the Almighty. Yours much bounden in all duty, John Robinson, Pastor, and William Brewster, Elder. reading from Deuteronomy, the eighth chapter. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land of brooks of water, of fountains and springs, flowing forth in valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land in which you will eat bread without scarcity, in which you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills you can dig copper. And you shall eat and be full, and you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. Take heed, 
lest you forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments and his ordinances and his statutes, which I command you this day, lest when you have eaten and are full and have built goodly houses and live in them, and when your herds and flocks multiply and your silver and gold is multiplied and all that you have is multiplied, then your heart be lifted up and you forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage, who led you through the great and terrible wilderness with its fiery serpents and scorpions and thirsty ground where there was no water, who brought you water out of the flinty rock, who fed you in the wilderness with manna, which your fathers did not know, that he might humble you and test you to do your good in the end. Beware, lest you say in your heart, my power and the might of my hand have gotten me this wealth. You shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, that he may confirm his covenant, which he swore to your fathers as at this day. Here ends the reading. It's hard to believe that we are at Thanksgiving in this year that I think no one will forget. Uh, it will certainly not be like Thanksgivings that we know. And yet, as we think about the things that we have lost, perhaps not gathering with our family members, perhaps having lost family members ourselves, that we gather to give thanks in the midst of everything that we have gone through. The Lord has been with us. God has seen us through. And it is good for our hearts and for our well-being to give thanks, to know as the people writing uh, these, some ancient documents that um, we do not accomplish anything on our own, that God is with us, God provides for us, and God loves us. And so it may not be like Thanksgivings of the past. I will not be gathering uh, with anyone outside of my immediate family, um, but, but I am thankful. I am thankful for the beautiful life that I have given. I am thankful for struggles because they have made them made me who I am and I'm thankful for the people who are in my life that you bring me such joy and hope that I can only be thankful and so this day of Thanksgiving it might be a bittersweet day it very well may be but I hope that in your heart that you can be truly thankful, truly thankful for what is around you, the small things, but also what is yet to come as we begin a new season of Advent on Sunday. And so may there be thanksgiving joy in your heart, giving thanks for all of our blessings that God has given us and for the blessings of each other. Let us pray. O oh God, who desires good things for all creatures, satisfy our hunger, not just for food, but for freedom, truth, justice, and love. O oh, risen Christ, you revealed yourself to us as one who gives to the poor and cares for all people. 
We dedicate our lives and our offerings to your service. O Holy Spirit, bless these gifts and abide in our hearts so that our gifts and our actions may live out our faith, glorify God, and bring forth a fruitful harvest for the kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As the pioneers of the Plymouth Colony gathered around the feasting table with Native Americans in 1621 to give thanks for all that they had been given by our bountiful provider, so that we too gather on this Thanksgiving at this Thanksgiving time to offer thanks for all these gifts which the Lord has seen fit to give us, especially for our country, our state, and our town. Let us pray. Almighty and generous God, we bring before you in our hearts and on our Thanksgiving table the gifts and blessings which you have given us this year. And in humble gratitude, we give you thanks for them. We thank you as well for the blessings which come to us through the peace and prosperity of our nation, our state, and our town. We praise you and we thank you, O God. We acknowledge that we have greatly received, so are we responsible Therefore, O Lord, keep us from being unfaithful in our lives as citizens of this nation and as recipients of all the, that past generations of Americans have bequeathed to us. Help us to be worthy of our ancestors and of their God. Help us, O God, to be faithful. To all the higher, high desires of the pioneers and prophets, Help us, O God, to be faithful. To their belief in the possibilities of a common people, help us, O God, to be faithful. To their passion for freedom and their readiness to die in its defense, help us, O God, to be faithful. To their scorn of tyranny and their trust of men and women to rule themselves, Help us, O God, to be faithful to their vision of a human commonwealth in which the people of many lands may share. Help us, O God, to be faithful to their release from the prejudice of old world and their will to build a new one. Help us, O God, to be faithful as our ancestor, ancestors trusted in you, O Lord, you delivered them. Keep us ever close to you. Lord of the nations, guide our people by your spirit to go forward in justice and freedom. Give us what outward prosperity may be your will. But above all things, give us faith in you that our nation may bring glory to your name and blessing to all people. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May the Lord of all creation shower his blessing and favor upon you. Amen. May the Lord of the harvest grace your thanksgiving table with his presence and fill your loved ones with peace. Amen. May the Lord of salvation guide you all your days until you come into the joys of his eternal kingdom. Amen. 
And may Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen.